For about a month now, I've been editing color images in a brand new way. It's my new favorite thing, and I can't believe I've never done this before. Here's how, play tape. So color images can be vibrant and true to life. Black and white images can be dramatic and artistic, but when you combine the two during the editing process, they become a powerful tool for creating works of art in your photography. Let me show you what I mean. These are the four images in which I'll be revealing my new editing process. Let's start with a simple and effective one. Here's an image I took of a McLaren 650S. You may recognize it from a previous YouTube video on this channel. It was taken using available ambient light from the car parks, overhead lights. So we have some nasty yellowy orange on the left side here, some green foliage in the back, some blues coming in from the outside, and finally reds and magentas in those bucket seats. Now to change this to a black and white image, we don't simply click convert to black and white because we want to bring back color gradually. Instead, I'll head down to the color mixer section and take out all of the color from the individual sliders, which leaves us with essentially a grayscale image. And this is the first part of the process. So what this does is allow us to view which area of the image needs enhancement without the interference of color, because essentially photography is the manipulation or capturing of light. Without light, there is no color. So editing an image first in black and white will show us where the image can be improved from a light and shade point of view. Let's head back up to the basic sliders and turn this into a real black and white. Grab the whites and boost those to add contrast. About plus 60 is good. Blacks can come down to about negative 15, a touch of clarity at plus 10, but then counteract that grungy texture at negative five. The next thing is to create depth in the background by adding some haze and blur so the car stands out. Grab a radial gradient and let's draw a nice oval shape behind the car. Now we can use the dehaze slider, then push into the negative end by around minus 55. The same with the clarity slider, and then some whites. Now I'd like to add a touch of vignette to the bottom corners to draw the eye into the scene. Create new mask, then linear gradient. And bring down the exposure, and the same with the blacks. Around negative 22 should do it. And repeat the other side. Let's head back to the HSL sliders and in luminance, we can improve further the contrast targeting specific colors. Yellows bringing up the car's bonnet, greens lift the background even further, and blues coming in from the right side. Now we have what could be considered a decent black and white image. Now it's time to strategically introduce back color and color grading. On the saturation tab, let's start at the top and work our way down. The reds will bring back those bucket seats. In fact, let's push them all the way to plus 100. Now let's see what happens with the orange slider. There is some orange in the seat, but pushing it too far introduces those horrible car park lights on the floor. So let's keep it around minus 60. Yellows again bring back those overhead lights, so I'm keeping those out of the image. Same with the greens and the aquas don't do much. Blues are present over on the right hand side of the image, so around negative 25 and I'll keep purples and magentas to a minimum. But I think the bucket seats are still a little underwhelming, so let's change the hue more towards the red end. Now that has a bit more punch. The problem is we essentially now have a black and white image with a couple of red chairs. So this is where the color grading happens. On the shadows wheel of the color grading section, we can add some cobalt blues into the darker areas of the image. Then if we change the blending slider, we can stretch this color further into the midtones, or only have the color in the blackest parts of the image, which is where I'd like to sit. Then let's target the midtones with a turquoise and highlights a touch of light blue. One final thing, let's target the chairs with a brush mask, paint around the chairs and just add some saturation. Bring down the shadows of hair and the blacks. Add a little bit of overall vibrance. And now we have a mean looking image, very different from the original raw file. So by applying a black and white treatment first, we see what the image needs regarding light and shade. And then our eyes are ready to introduce the important colors and which to leave out. Let's have a look at another example. 
Next up, taking in Times Square on my honeymoon. First thing I'm going to do is crop as we're a little top heavy, and there's good. Right, let's do the desaturate phase and create our grayscale image. And just like before, I'm going to make a punchy black and white version by increasing the whites around plus 45, blacks down to negative 20, Highlights need to come down as we're losing detail in the sky and the cowboy hat, and shadows around negative 18. Now for some localized gradients. I'll darken the sky by a stop, and blacks reduced down to about negative 47 should do it. And a little vignette in the corner here, drawing the eye into the scene once again. And the hand holding the phone looks a little overexposed, so let's bring that down to with the highlight slider and the black slider. Now let's bring back some colour. The two top sliders are usually going to deal with skin tones, which is a good place to start. The red brings out the Coca-Cola sign and a couple of hats and bags. The orange slider, let's settle on negative 21. Yellows I don't think we need, and same for the greens. Aqua, not too much going on there. Blue, I'm going to be subtle with this for now at around negative 73. And the last two sliders don't really add anything to the image. Perfect. Heading over to the other tabs, bringing up the luminosity on the reds, and the sky will benefit from a bump down in exposure. Now here's where the blues will really make a difference by introducing some aquas. Around negative 40 gives this a more vintage vibe. And speaking of vintage, we can go even further by adding some warm tones into the shadows. Now that looks nice. And a touch of reduction in the luminosity. Mid-tones, let's go for some aqua. And finally, highlights, how about some greens to give us that old style Fujifilm colour grade, which goes ridiculously well with sunny scenes like this. This long exposure was taken on the Isle of Wight, showing some pretty cool light trails. Lots of colours happening in this shot. But let's see if we can calm things down and create a bit of artwork. I'll start in the usual way by desaturating all of the colour. And I'll bring back some detail in the highlights. Minus 40 should do it. Some blacks to add even more contrast and a hair of clarity, but not too much. Now for some localised adjustments. Bring down the exposure of the sky with a linear gradient. And some blacks here. And I think the wall on the left side of the image needs lifting with a radial filter. Maybe a stop. And some whites to bring out the texture. Now let's go for a highlight on the road here with a bump in exposure. And another radial over here to darken down and create definition on the road. And maybe one more radial filter on these roofs in the distance as we're losing detail there. A bit of exposure boost, some whites to really bring them to life, and a touch of negative contrast. And that's it for the black and white version, now for some colour. We know that the centrepiece of this image are those light trails, so let's give them some oversaturation. And there is a decent amount of orange in the image too from these shop windows. Let's go with around plus 40. Yellows make this image a little green, so not too much needed at around negative 25. Green I'm not so sure about. Blue is going to deal with the sky, but I think too much pulls away from the light trails. Purples, there are some on the pub wall, but artistically I'm choosing to leave those out. And let's also just darken down the oranges a little with a luminance slider. Here's an image that has lots of colour. Yellows and oranges in the taxi and chimney, blues in the smoke, aqua in the bridge, and magentas in the brickwork. Let's desaturate. And then make a decent black and white image with pushing the whites to around plus 25. And this time let's dehaze to add some definition and luminance in the shadows can come down to around negative 40. And I'm going to add lots of mask adjustments. First on the taxi to darken the foreground. But we've lost detail in the wheel, so I'll bring that back with a radial filter by pushing the exposure and shadows. Next, I'll create some haze in the distance by bringing down the dehaze slider. Now let's bring out some detail in the buildings using exposure and clarity. 
and the same on this side with that lovely diagonal leading line. How about some haze and atmosphere from the heavens with a touch of overexposure and reduction in clarity? Now that looks moody. Now to bring out the centerpiece of this image, the smoke. Using a brush mask, let's select the smoke and simply bring those whites all the way up. Now we're looking like a black and white image. One final mask on the taxi in the middle of the scene before we bring back color. So reds, there are some in the chimney which we need. Definitely need orange for the taxis at around plus 35. Yellow, I don't think we need because orange is doing all the work here. Green, nothing. There are some aquas in the bridge, so let's push those a bit. Blue is now the offending color in this composition, so let's leave those alone. Purple, no, and magentas, maybe a little in the skin tones of the pedestrians. And I think all we need out of the color grading wheels is some aquas in the shadows to accent the bridge. So there we have it, a new way to edit color images using black and white techniques, selective color choices, and a spot of color grading. I hope you had fun, I had fun, and don't forget to like the video, that always helps with the people over at YouTube ticking their boxes of approval. And uh, let's catch up on the flip side. Subscribe! <laughs>